Good day, everyone. Welcome to Natural Prana. Hey, everyone. Um, so I wanted to just make this video um, about breastfeeding. And we just made a video about formula. Um, so I wanted to make this one uh, just while we're talking about it. And... You gotta follow that down. <laughs> and um so it's just pretty much going to be like my thoughts about it um so on this way so you don't pull everything no <laughs> this way he just woke up <laughs> Good. um so one thing that I know, so those are just things that I think about like throughout the day, um, just because I guess because I breastfeed so much, but, um, so the main thing that I have thought about is how much we place, um, you know, we put like a time limit on feeding them and it starts with the doctors and they tell you you know that they should be eating every two hours um and i think that it really it, it truly starts there um because we should not even be thinking about uh what time we're feeding them how long we're feeding them you know they tell you to time it on each side to make sure that you're feeding them enough um I think you're feeding them enough if you're feeding them when they want to eat and how long they want to eat because you and your baby are so in tune with each other that um, the baby's going to let you know when, when it's hungry and when it is done eating. So one thing I've done with Kai is literally I have never timed how long he has eaten and how often he's eaten. I like guessed, you know, if somebody like, oh, how much does he eat? And sometimes I've said, like, I've said, I think almost every time I really don't know, but you know, sometimes it could be an hour, sometimes it could be two hours. Um, it just depends. It, it's literally up to him whenever he wants to eat. So, um, you know, I. I don't even think about it throughout the day and I think that that's really important because then you're not then it's not like a chore to you so it's not like two hours is up I have to feed him again um or oh my god it's been two hours why doesn't he want to eat I need to feed him um and I think that by doing that, it's more like it can just be this enjoyable experience together. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, it's just, it, I don't know, it's just not even a thought in my head when the last time he ate was or how long he ate. It was, it's just like, oh, he's getting a little bit fussy. He probably wants to nurse and I just nurse him and, and that's it. Which... That is how simple our existence is here. And that is how much we complicate it in the same exact thing because we think, we think we think too much. But is it really us thinking? Right. And that's the thing. We like, we overcomplicate everything. And, and we're really, we're taught to overcomplicate everything because they tell you that. We're, we're an, yeah, we're an overcomplicated system. Yeah. There's, there's nothing else but complexness around because of it. You can't get anything else out of it. Right. So, you know, as soon as they're born, um, we're taught the overcomplication, really. You know, they need to eat every two hours, blah, blah, blah. And that, that was one thing that I said in my last video is... Um, that's where the supplementing comes in because when we're 
when we're doing it every two hours, um, then we're not doing it when the baby actually really wants to eat. Um, so then your body is kind of thrown off and maybe you're not producing your milk how you really should be and then they're not getting everything that they you know could be getting if you're nursing on demand when they want to um and it's just i mean it is really so simple and i've had the thought that um well, I knew that, that before we had a second baby that I wanted to be home with them because I wanted to give everything that I had um, to them. And I didn't want it to be like, when I, when I went back to work after I had Ava, it was literally one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, leaving her every single day to go to a place that I hated to be at with people that I did not like. Hi. And um, it was just, it was horrible. And, and that's when I stopped really breastfeeding too because it, it was too much to try and work eight hour days. Um, usually it was longer than that. Um, and then try to pump too, and it was it just wasn't the same as nursing, and um, which none of that comes before your child, which we think it does. Right, right. You were always worried about, um, you know, how, what daycare are we going to put them in, and you know, yeah, just what, all this stuff. What are we going to do next with them? And we never stop to just think from the baby's or child's perspective on what they actually want, what they actually want to be doing because it is not what you are choosing for them. They, they didn't choose to be put into the society. Right. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's such a non-complicated thing. Um, it's, it's really so simple. And, and that's another thing we, um, when you're using, because I, because I, you know, I, I only exclusively breastfeed him, so I don't even use bottles or anything like that, no pacifiers. Um, and, and that even simplifies everything. You know, I watch, like, my sister, when, when her son starts to get fussy and he wants to eat, she has to get a bottle out she has to put the formula in she has to put the water in she has to warm it in the microwave because um naturally babies want warm milk because the mom's breast milk is warm and so they're waiting you know for all of these things to be done just so that they can eat whereas when kai starts to get fussy i literally just have to pull my boob out and put it in his mouth and he is satisfied. Um, yeah, sometimes it, he doesn't even really want to breastfeed. He just wants to be held or mm -hmm. to be on the nipple. Right, yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's just, it's seriously so simple. And Which is what life is. Yeah. Well, once you find the thing that is so simple that it actually brings you joy... That's what you should be doing. Right. Um, so then I was also thinking about um, th not only do doctors push the formula, but then they also push uh, solids, starting your baby on solids. And, oops. <laughs> and this is something so simple too. The baby actually does not need anything. Um, for, for at least the first year of its life, it fully can be nourished by the mom's milk. And obviously if her, you know, health and diet is sufficient um, and isn't lacking in anything, but if you eat, a, you know, a whole food good diet, then there should be no reason why you can't breastfeed for that long. Um, but we should be breastfeeding until the baby wants to be done breastfeeding. We, 
um, our society has also made it um, very, it's, it's strange for people to breastfeed really past a year, um, which is completely absurd. So, you know, after a year, how does it make sense that you're going to stop providing them the milk that is made for them? Um, and then you're going to use something that's a complete foreign substance, cow milk, uh, which is so heavily pushed. You're going to give them that, uh, which is made for a baby cow. Um, naturally. It, naturally. Cow. Right. So it just, it doesn't even make sense at all. Um, and not only that, so so society has made it weird that we breastfeed, you know, into toddlerhood. Which, the, the reason that it looks weird to a lot of people is because once the baby gets to a certain age, they have it programmed in their mind that they don't breastfeed anymore because they don't really see many babies breastfeeding at that point. And once their baby gets that age, that mental image kicks in and they start to even even before then but it just isn't right at that age it, it doesn't feel right to them because of the images that they've been given and because of thoughts they've been well, given. it's sexualized hmm? boobs are sexualized and a lot of people think oh. it's weird well Hey, I wasn't even speaking about boobs himself. Oh. <laughs> I mean, just, just from the child's perspective. When the oh, child yeah. looks a certain way, it's weird to them. But, right, that's the reason why people also think that it's weird from the child. Because they look at their boobs as sex toys first and foremost instead of a child's uh, nourishment. Which is all that it ever was. Right. I, I don't even know that we should have breasts because they are all fat. <laughs> right. And most fat on our body doesn't need to be there. <laughs> Sorry, he moves around a lot now. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's very, I mean, oh, breast, breasts are sexualized um, in our society. And that's why it is very strange to most people to keep breastfeeding because then they're like well once a child is so old they know what boobs are and so it's weird if they want to still suck on your boob and if you think about it they're not seeing it as that they're sucking right. on your boob which there again we're not thinking of it from the their perspective baby's perspective right um, because he doesn't see anything weird about it. Yeah, it is selfish. Um, we see it as, or I mean, he sees it as this is his comfort and his nourishment and his love. And he will, you know, they should be able to have that available to them until they fully decide that they are emotionally and physically um, stable enough to be without that um, and I think that all babies are different because everybody's different and every situation is different so there's no age that it should be okay this baby is done breastfeeding you know that should be that's something between the baby and the mom and their relationship and I think that the baby when they are emotionally stable um, and properly nourished, they decide, they know when they are, you know, when that, when that is complete, um, when that relationship is complete, where they don't need to rely on the mom to provide that nourishment to them anymore. But like Corey said about the selfishness, um, that is really how we are. We're so, we're so selfish. Um, and even with our babies, you know, it's like, which uh, that's how we're, we're trained as a society is to be selfish unknowingly though. Right. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, when I was raising Ava, when she was a baby, I would have never called myself selfish. And looking back now, I was completely selfish. 
um, I was selfish for ever giving her a bottle because I didn't feel like nursing her. Um, I was selfish for getting angry with her because she needed, you know, extra emotional support during the night. Um, there's just lots of things that, that really made me selfish, but I think the main thing is, is us not wanting to be available to feed them when they want to eat. And that goes along with feeding them every two hours because I, I mean, I've seen so many moms get upset when the two, before the two hours is up and the baby is, you know, wanting to eat and they get upset. They get upset that the baby wants to eat already and it hasn't been two hours. You can't be hungry. It hasn't been two hours yet. There's no way you're hungry. You just you just ate. I'm not saying it to you guys. <laughs> I'm not saying it to you. <laughs> you know, that, but I have heard people say that, that there's no way that this baby can be hungry. They just ate. And who are you to decide? They're their own person. How can you say that they don't need that nourishment when they feel that they need it you know um that is that is being selfish and a baby doesn't see this world how we do it at all when, eat? when they want what we call nourishment they're not looking just for physical nourishment from the milk they want the whole package which includes that whole entire thing that the mother does when she feeds him and he might not even want the milk sometimes he might just want the, the emotional closest. support right the connection which is still feeding him though it's still giving him the energy that's still fulfilling what he wants right um so what he's doing now is another thing because he just started doing this so a lot of people i have heard a lot of moms also say that their babies were not interested in breastfeeding and this thought comes from them um, becoming interested more in their surroundings. And it's not that they don't like breastfeeding, it's simply that they are exploring the world around them. Go ahead. How else would they stop breastfeeding? But if they started to look around, observe, and eventually moved along. Right. Um, so when you look at it from a different perspective, not that they're turning their heart away and not wanting to breastfeed or anything like that. And if we just slow down ourselves and if it takes a little bit longer to feed them, you have no other place in the world to be except be there for them doing what they need. So what I've been doing with Kai is when he um, I mean, he, he's doing it right now. Um, he looks around and he, you know, he's grabbing my hand and he's touching me and he just, he does all these little things and I just let him do it. Um, there's no reason to, to fight with him, to tell him, um, that, you know, it's time to eat and he needs to eat because I mean, that, that's so silly. It's just making... You know, it would make me upset, it would make him upset, and it's just not necessary. So I just feed him, you know, what if, if he's nursing and he wants to look around, I just let him look around, and when he's done looking around, he'll come back on my boob um, when he wants to. And we've been to a couple family parties where there's a lot of people around and he gets a little bit, I don't want to say overwhelmed, but just he, there's too yes, much. Yes. Yeah, no, it is overwhelmed. Baby should not be in an environment with right. a large amount of people because they just can't understand how to communicate with that many people at once. I mean, if you think going? of where they would really be, it'd be in nature with a few select people which should be their immediate family that was around them when they were born right um so he will get distracted so that happened my sister just had her birthday party for her son and he was getting he i could tell that he wanted to nurse but there was so much going around going on around him <laughs> what we do one of those toys um that he couldn't and 
so I just I went um, we actually came back over here because we're in a trailer um, in my parents yard <laughs> so we just came over here and I I knew like as soon as we got in here then he started breastfeeding so I knew that that was what he wanted he needed like space and um, I think that that's necessary sometimes for you to remove yourself from a situation if you see that they're not, you know, if they're not really interested in eating, but you know that they want to. So, um, so yeah, that was one. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want, he wants that. Here, look at, look at your ring. He wants your ring. <coughs> You want your ring? Um, so let's see what else did I want to talk about. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Breastfeeding has really taught me to slow down. Um, because we, we always want to go and we always want to put, put everything, time everything and put it on a schedule. And that's just not how how it works. Um, and I think babies are such a great example of how it doesn't work. We want so bad to train them and to put them on the schedule and everything like that. When, um, you know, why do we fight it so much? We, why don't we just go along with it? Um, why do we fight everything? Right. Really? I, I personally do not believe we should be having babies if we cannot take care of them um, ourselves. And by that, I mean not having somebody else basically raise your baby for you. Um, there's so much lost when you are leaving for over eight hours a day and someone That's else one third of the day right and and this is five days out of the week i know there's part then, you know then you sleep they say eight hours at right least. um and i know there's people who do part-time work and things like that and to me any time that you're not with them is so there's just so much lost and i i don't just mean like you're missing out on like the little things that they do but your connection and your bond and your closeness the emotional um growth of the baby is i think is slowed down significantly because you're not there oh, yeah. i mean in every regard the development of the baby slows down because right. the mother isn't there the father isn't there and there's usually a bunch of stuff going on around them and it's not I mean they have to go to the usually it's in an unfamiliar place to them that they're going every day and and then they're put on the schedule you know you have to wake them up and usually because um, to get them ready to go to this place and you're usually stressed out because you're going somewhere that you don't want to be um, and it's just not it's not healthy um, and that's, I'm, I'm so grateful every day that I, I, that I get to be with him and spend, you know, all my time with him as much time as I need to, as I want to, as he wants to, and he needs to, that I can be available for him because, um, that's what babies need, uh, especially their moms. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> You're tired. Um, so something else that I have thought of is a lot of moms, um, quite a few of my cousins actually have, uh, they want to go back to work because they need, um, like they say that they need a break. And to me, <clears throat> that's, uh, I don't know, that's just crazy that you would need 
a break from your baby, something that you created and that you chose to bring into this world. Yeah, you'd rather go to work. Right. You'd rather go to work, to this job, to be with people that generally you don't, um, I mean, maybe you work with some people that, you know, you have some things in common with and that you become friends with, but for the most part, people complain about work. They do not like their job. They don't like the people they're with, whatever. And then to say that you want to go to work because you need a break from your children, um, you probably shouldn't have had those children then. As mothers, we're nurturers and we're caretakers um, naturally. And to deny that, um, I mean, you're denying your existence, really, because that's what we're here for. Um, yeah, in every regard, Corey just said. I mean, that we're, I knew that um, I was here to take care of Kai and taking care of him in every single aspect, not just making sure that he gets to daycare on time. That's not taking care of him. Um, taking care of him is being there for him emotionally, physically, um, just, you know, in every single aspect. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> I guess this isn't really just a breastfeeding video, but it does go along with breastfeeding because that's like your, the main connection that you have, that you have with them because we're, that's the main, you know, nourishment for them, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. Um, so I, so, so far on my breastfeeding journey, um, I have not, you know, used a bottle, um, which we said in our other video that causes, um, nipple confusion. Bottles do, pacifiers do. Uh, anything like that that you're you know putting in their mouths um, which it messes with your product with your milk production you're not able to keep up with the demand with them um, I have breastfed on demand <laughs> since he's been born and he smiles all the time <laughs> at everybody <laughs> <laughs> um, so I breastfed on demand uh, ever since he's been born and I think that it's seriously you know the best the best thing that I could have done somebody had commented me the other day because they couldn't believe that I that I'm still breastfeeding him at five months and that he hasn't had anything else he hasn't had any food or anything like that um Oh, which I'm, I forgot about that. I do want to talk about food. Um, and I, and I couldn't, I, I didn't understand why it was so hard to believe that that's what I was doing. And somebody commented, well, it's saving you money. And that kind of made me sad that, um, that we see breastfeeding as saving money because formula is expensive which doesn't make sense because of the shit that's in it it's really cheap um but it just it doesn't make sense that that you're like yeah i'm breastfeeding and it's saving me all this money that was literally never a thought i mean well you're not saving money you're just not using it <laughs> right. Saving you if we were doing it. Yeah. Um, well, no, because it's saving you money if you're not using it. Because we chose literally not to use it. You save when you were doing it. Right. Yeah. So, it's sad to me that people just see it as money still. Um, and not as that it's this, I mean, it's really such a beautiful thing, the connection, the love, the nourishment, all of that. Um, but most people choose to, you know, overlook that and just look at the money aspect of it. And 
I don't know. I don't know. That's just crazy. But I was talking about how we overcomplicate everything. And I was going into the food. Um, so, you know, not very long ago, people were, rec doctors were recommending that you start giving them food, like, so super early, like three months. You know, three months you can start giving them cereal. For one, that is probably, like, one of the worst things that you could possibly give a baby whose digestive system is still growing and is brand new and um, cannot digest very well and you're going to give them grains. Um, I mean, it's just horrible. And then how you do it as well. I know like one of my cousins, she was putting it in her baby's bottle so that he would sleep longer. And that just goes back to the whole selfish thing. We're so selfish that we are going to, you know, risk our baby's health and well-being so that we can sleep longer at night. Um, I mean, and I could just get into that because that just goes with, like, the co-sleeping thing. If you co-sleep with them, they're usually not going to keep you up at night. But, um, anyway... We're going to risk that just to just to get a couple of hour like more hours of sleep at night. And then we're giving it to them. That's when like the whole meal starts. So we're giving them cereal for breakfast and then they get that nasty pureed, you know, vegetables and fruit at lunch and then they're getting something at dinner. And I mean, if if we if you just think about it, breast milk is super sweet. And it's cereal is what cereal means a number. Oh. Um, you know, we're now I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, the cereal it sh definitely should not be given to them at all, but especially not in the beginning of the day, um, because that that digests so super slow. And then it's just like sitting in their stomach. And plus they add like so much stuff to that baby cereal too. It's disgusting. Um, what is cereal? Yeah, what is cereal? <laughs> but Why does it have share the same word as cereal killers? Yeah, yeah. But I was thinking about meals and how we complicate the other day because um, my sister was trying to figure out um what to feed her son like for breakfast lunch and dinner because he doesn't want to eat you know all of that oh i was talking about how breast milk is sweet <laughs> um so when we think about things that are sweet what makes sense is obviously fruit fruit is super sweet super easy to digest that should definitely be you know baby's first food when you feel the baby when the baby is ready when they show that they are ready um and that's not when a doctor is telling you baby needs to be eating cereal now so you need to start you know giving them that in the morning and we we get so anxious and eager to give them this stuff um and that goes back to us being selfish because society has made food such a big deal and so we want to give them their first taste. It makes it, you know, it's so cute when they first taste something and they make faces. And so we want to do it. We want to put that out there. We want to get it, you know, get a picture of them eating their first food. Um, when really, like I was telling Corey, if we feed them, like if we breastfeed them, for as long as they want to and we don't even worry about giving them um other food it's so simple then then you're not thinking what am i going to give them now what am i going to do now and especially if you want to even like simplify it after that you know after when they do start eating just giving them whole foods not giving them cereal and not giving them taste of all the food that you're eating um, 
you know, my sister just had her first birthday party for her son, and it made me think of when I had my first party for the first party for Ava for her first birthday. And we want to give them, like, it's so popular now to get, like, the smash cakes for the babies. And, and I had one for her, too. She had her own separate cake, and then we had, like, the big cake for everybody. And we think it's cute that they're, you know, that they're going to get frosting and stuff all over. When, when you look at it, it's not them that's going after the frosting and wanting to eat. It's us trying to put their fingers in it and putting it in their mouth so that they taste it. And yes, it is sweet. So yes, they're, they, maybe they do want more, but they're not digging in that cake. And why, why do you want to give them that on their first birthday when th these are foods that we're addicted to? Um, we're addicted to processed sugar. We're addicted to processed cake mixes and things like that and all these dyes. Why would you want to give that to your baby who just turned one, who has such a sensitive digestive system? It just doesn't make sense. And, and that just goes back to um, we're just going along with society and everything like that. Um, we don't question anything. And I mean, really, it is a sad thing when you think about it because, because most people don't even think about it at all. They just go along with it and they think it's cute and they think it's fun and it's just what everybody does. You have a big birthday party and you eat all this shit and you give all this shit to your baby and it's fun. Um, when really you're, you're just starting, you're starting the downward spiral from there. Um, but we shouldn't be giving them all these foods especially when they're so young and especially when we see ourselves if you just look at yourself and how many health problems you have or how you feel after you're eating all this stuff and then you want to give it to your your kid so you want your kid to go through that um i don't know it doesn't make sense to me so uh if we just you know, focus on bre like breastfeeding them for as long as they want and just giving them whole foods when they show they're ready. And by that, I mean, um, are they actually, you know, crawling up and reaching for something? Are they, even if you're holding them, are they reaching for it? Chances are, they, they probably are, re I mean, he reaches for everything, but are they actually then putting it in their mouth to taste it? I, they mimic us so much. He was going like, like that while we were eating when he was so, I mean, maybe a couple months old, right? Wasn't you? He was only like a couple months old when he was watching us chew something and he's making that same movement with his mouth so really we're training them to eat in a sense because they're watching us for so long put this stuff in our mouth and chew it and eat it um so we're, we even teach them that we teach them everything so i don't think that there really is a way to know when they're truly ready unless they weren't you know watching us eat themselves but we just have to remember that they have such a sensitive digestive system that's really not fully developed yet. Um, and if you are giving your baby um, cereal or thinking about it, I would suggest like definitely second guessing that or looking into it more because um, I think that's like the number one thing. And then just like for lunch, you know, my sister was like mixing like I mean, I did it too. I'm not just saying my sister. I just say my sister because I'm around her just, and she's doing it right now, so I just see it all the time. Just mixing like the vegetable with the fruit because that's what they tell you to do. And most of the time, they're not, you're only getting the vegetable down if you dip it in the fruit too. Um, because that's what they want. They, babies want the sweet stuff. 
and the sweet stuff is the easy to digest stuff so that's what they should be getting and I know a lot of people are like well they can't just have fruit I mean the fruits like the dessert they have to have their vegetables and they have to have like all this other stuff and um, I'm, I mean fruit is definitely sufficient enough for them but truly breast milk should be like the main thing that they get for the first year of their life I think everything in between then is just um, experimental for them. They're experimenting and they're learning and they're having fun. And that's what it should be. It shouldn't be that that's their, uh, that they should rely on that nutrition. This is probably like another video <laughs> that I'm changing it into. But I just think about all this while I'm breastfeeding him. So it kind of goes together. Um, but yeah, breastfeeding has just taught me to really slow down and to not worry about time. I mean, we're so, like, so many people I've seen breastfeeding while they're, like, on their phone. And you know what? I I mean, I admit it's on, I do it too. I have to, like, remind myself to be conscious, like, I have to consciously remind myself to get off my phone or to not do something else, like, while I'm breastfeeding him because that time is not to do something else. I'm there in that moment to, um, to, to breastfeed him, to be. to be, yeah, to be, to be with him, to, to just be, to be there in that moment. So, um, I think that that's something, I don't know. It, it's just, it's something so special and I just love it and when he I think that that whenever he decides that he is ready um, it'll just be you know the right time that he will stop nursing and I already noticed that sometimes um, well because now he he gets more at a time than um, than when he was you know littler because his stomach's getting bigger and it can hold more so he goes a little bit longer in between feeding and um, I've never timed, like I said, I never timed it before, but it just seems like, you know, even if he goes like a couple hours, it seems so long, um, and I miss it already, um, because I just like that, you know, like that specialness that we share. <laughs> He's just smiling at me over there. <laughs> He's so sweet. Um... And that's another thing, is he's a very, like, content and happy. He's so happy. And I really, truly think that it's because just how how we do stuff with him. And I know a lot of, like, I mean, so many of our family members don't agree with us on it. And it just makes so much sense to me. I don't know how you, you, you have to think that what you're doing with them is affecting them I mean to a T so me giving you know me just giving him everything that he needs when he needs it and when he wants it of course he's going to be really happy and you know really content and you know just chubby <laughs> and healthy and thriving because he's getting I don't know, all the nourishment in every single area of his life. So, I don't know. I guess that's it. Do you have anything that you want to talk about? I talk, I rambled a lot, but, um, I don't know. I just wanted to say my thoughts on breastfeeding because it's still kind of looked down upon, um, especially in our society, just because you know, where if you look in a lot of other countries, they they breastfeed well into toddlerhood and it's completely accepted. But here we have made it so it's not the norm to do that. Um, and I think that it definitely needs to be. There's nothing more normal than providing nourishment to your child. And it... Um, Natural. Yeah. What did normal I say? Normal isn't natural. Oh, yeah. He said natural, which, yes, it is completely natural to 
um, provide nourishment to your child and and that includes breastfeeding um, there's nothing non-normal or non-natural about it um, so yeah that's it uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like this or and like this video if you liked it if you made it through um, sorry for the rambling but those are my thoughts on breastfeeding and thanks for watching our channel